Hey guys, this is Kai from WCC, and today we're going to talk about the Three Musketeers. Now, the Three Musketeers is about three people going to a Vanguard team tournament and realizing that they don't know what third deck they're going to pick. Now, that problem is what we know as the third deck conundrum. And if you didn't know about that, I just told you. I just made that up, just like how I made up the story of the Three Musketeers, because I have no idea what it's about. But if we look inside it, we can see that there is... A Bermuda and a gold paladin card and these are representative of what is meta in premium at the moment now if we go to a premium tournament for example we'll know that we're taking a gold paladin and we're gonna take a Bermuda because they're the best decks in premium at the moment and the biggest question we're gonna have to ask ourselves is what is our third deck what third deck are we playing if you look at the meta analyses that Solemn and all that have been compiling we see that there's a lot of Angie, there's a lot of uh, Ezel, and then there's a lot of other stuff that we don't know why. Why is there just so many decks out there? And that is because of this. That's because they don't know what the third deck is going to be. Or they do know what that third deck is going to be, and they're very comfortable in taking those decks. So we have a huge variation on what the third deck can be, and it's the majority of your testing is going to be finding out what that third deck is now, you, when you're testing, you're not going to need to test Ezel. You're not going to need to test Bermuda as much because from all the information that we've gained in this entire season and for a while now, we already know what these decks look like. We only need to know how to actually play the deck if you're not comfortable in playing them. And then you're just going to need to put like one or two techs for your metagame. But that third deck is the total unknown. Are you taking Ichikishima, Tom? Are you taking Gizes? Are you taking Pale Moon? Or are you taking Grand Blue? I don't know if you take Grand Blue. If you're manly enough, you can take Grand Blue, but you're definitely not taking something like Murakumo. I, I said it. I said it. Unlucky. But sure enough, you know the two decks. You just need to know the third deck. Similar situation in Standard. You know you're taking Murakumo because everyone knows that. It's just so popular. It's one of the best decks in the format at the moment. But then what else are you taking? You could be taking Shadow Paladin. Good matchups against Murakumo. And then what? Then, then what? what? What's after that? Do you take OTT? Do you take Angel Feather? I don't know. I don't. You'd, you'd have to decide yourself. With Standard, it's a bit more easier because the power levels are kind of similar. But you're still going to need to do that testing to find that third deck. Now, I'm going to brag a little bit and talk about our past experiences in finding out what third decks we want to play for our team. Back in 2016, we came first at our Spring Fest. And in 2018, we came second. So I think we kind of have a decent idea on what we did, but I'll tell you our thought process for our team. So during 2016, the top deck of that time was Chaos Messiah. And a lot of people in the meta knew it was a version of Chaos, but it was kind of like only in Japan that Chaos Messiah was really played more of. So a lot of people would still just play pure Chaos. So we knew we're definitely bringing Chaos Messiah. And then our second deck, was going to be 7 Cs, non-cancer 7 Cs. It was just legitimate, legit, stride 7 Cs, all that. Because simply, it had a good matchup against the majority of the decks, and it had a good matchup against Chaos. But the third deck was going to be totally unexpected. We're going to take Great Nature. Now, a lot of people would say, well, that's not unexpected. Great Nature was pretty good back then if you ran Tester Fox and blah, blah, blah. And we didn't run Tester Fox. We ran Big Belly. Our friend Mark was really into just playing Big Belly and playing Great Nature. And we just realized that as long as this deck doesn't face Link Joker or or anything that's actively retires, but that actually doesn't matter as much, you just kind of steamroll them. Like, Great Nature with Big Belly, you get a crit, you get a Crown Tiger. That was kind of game. A lot of people couldn't deal with that first stride. So... We put Mark on Great Nature and you just put him in the third position and hope he never played any Link Joker. Well, I sat on the first position and hopefully I played all the Link Jokers and I just had the advantage because I had some Messiah cards. So basically that worked out pretty well. We came first. Uh, Mark never lost a game because his Great Nature just kind of steamrolled everyone. And that was great. But yeah, we came first. And then in 2018, we already knew that we had two decks already that we're definitely going to play. 
Bermuda just got released then, and that deck was top tier for sure. It was the best deck in the format. So we knew we were taking that. We knew we were taking uh, Gear Chronicle because it has a good matchup against Bermuda. Like, the best matchup against Gear, uh, against Bermuda out of all the other decks available. And then it would be good against Nubatama because we would we were expecting Nubatamas. So we definitely were bringing those two decks. Now, our last deck was Dark Irregulars. And you'd think, wow, Dark Irregulars is not... It's pretty meta. Like, that, that deck was pretty good. But we were playing... Uh, the Assassin build. We weren't playing just your normal Darkness build, we are playing Assassin. And that's because our other team member, Kelvin, doesn't like to play with other people, he just likes to play with himself. But that aside, the other reason was that we knew when our Springfest was, we knew what cards were going to be released. And unfortunately for us, Kelvin was going to be out of commission for a while because he had things to do. So we tested that build early on. Before he had to go, and then he kind of solitaried his way through the rest of the time that he couldn't come out. And in the end, that actually worked out pretty well. We had a very unexpected pick on our third slot. And in that team tournament, we were able to talk with each other. So I just sat in middle, and hopefully I've played all their best players. And luckily, my deck is kind of the slowest out of everyone, so their best player couldn't help each other. And then I could just look around and see uh, how my other teammates were doing and offer support simply because yes communication was allowed and in the end we came second we got we got defeated on our uh, last round in the finals so that was unlucky but overall it turned out pretty well so back to the third deck conundrum find out what your third deck is going to be we, we've seen we've seen the ezels we've seen the bermuda we've seen some crazy new decks as well we've seen that pale moon loop pretty cool Pretty unexpected. Now people know how to deal with it. Maybe it's not the best pick. Maybe there's another deck that is going to be the best pick. Or maybe you're just going to go with a comfortable pick. So that is entirely up to you. I hope that with the time you put in to figure out this third deck, that takes you all the way to finals and takes you to the win. Okay? So see you guys in the next video. Have a good time testing. Have a good time playing. And have a good time winning. Bye.